Hey guys, this is Niz with uh, another episode of Nizcast. We're going to be doing uh, Bloodlust Episode 3 here. Um, sorry I haven't been putting out uh, videos recently. I've been sick. Um, still not 100%, so hopefully I don't go into a coughing fit in the middle of this video. Um, but yeah, I guess we'll, uh, we'll go right into it. I'm going to try to get some more videos out here um, shortly. Um, so we're just, I once again randomly selected this game. Uh, we've got five people on Hellborn. They all queued up together all uh, with the same clan tag. And uh, that means uh, the five on Legion also all queued together. We've got uh, purple, yellow, and orange. So Madman, uh, Bomb, and Polywog are all on Smurf accounts as well. Um, so let's see how they play here. Uh, it's a 1600 level game around there. Um, yellow also goes by the name of Dong Regu. Um, if you follow StarCraft 2 or the Korean Korean scene of StarCraft 2, uh, GSL and, and the like, um, well actually even some of uh, North American um, StarCraft 2 as well, you might know the name Dong Regu. I'm pretty sure this is a real Dong Regu. Uh, you know, there's no way someone else used the same name. It's this this has to be him. <laughs> so uh, let's, uh, let's see how Dong Regu plays here. So we've got uh, up, up in the top lane here, we've got Behemoth who already has his Chalice. I don't necessarily agree with getting Chalice this early, but uh, he has Chalice. We've got uh, Dong Regu on Bombardier. He also has a Chalice this early. Once again, I don't really like that. Um, because whenever you use Chalice, you're just going to hurt yourself. And especially Bomb doesn't have any more regen, um, health regen. Anyways, they're uh, in a 2v1 lane here ag up against this Puppet Master. Uh, Pup Master looks like he's going Chalice as well. I don't know with all these people going Chalice, but anyways, um, he's got uh, a health pot on him as well. And uh, in the jungle, we've got Legionnaire here. So Legionnaire's uh, l he's looking to gank here. So let's uh, get this playing and uh, see exactly what's going to happen here. I'm going to play it in normal speed first, and then I'll, I'll slow it down after. Um, so we're going to see Legionnaire come in behind here and come to gank. We're going to see a really really nice fissure from Behemoth to not only block off Legionnaire but also stop the the charge. Um, bomb did throw a bomb on Puppet Master uh, which is going to end up on these two turning on Puppet Master. Bomb's almost going to get the kill but he's going to man down. Behemoth's going to man up, chase him but uh, the health pot's going to go off. Fissure doesn't kill. He's going to see a taunt, Puppet Show and Behemoth is going to die. So just actually putting it to two two times speed and uh, just showing you kind of what happens after here. His Legionnaire is going to come around and try to get this kill on Bomb. Um, both players are actually going to play it pretty well. I'm going to slow down to one speed here. Um, and they're just unable to kill each other. Um, Legionnaire might have been able to kill Bomb with an extra auto attack, but Bomb did pop his uh, his Bomb a little early, so uh, he wasn't able to swing. So anyway, it's just backing it up here. Let's look at the first uh, Bloodlust. So, um, I like to stress the real importance of knowing um, what items the people in your lane have. Um, it's very, very important to know that this Puppet Master has a health pot. It's really important to keep track of his items and know what he has. Um, because you're going to see here, Behemoth is going to make a decision which is going to end in him dying and giving Bloodlust because he doesn't know that health pot's there. And if he did know the health pot is there, then he just made a really, really poor decision. So anyways, once again, playing this, we're going to slow it down. I really like, once again, I really like this stun from Behemoth, this Fissure, but... Okay. This Behemoth definitely should know that this bomb is on Puppet Master. So, um, he gets that Fissure off, he blocks Legionnaire. Legionnaire is not going to be able to get out, that's good. So they're going to be able to put some damage on Legionnaire. Problem is, is that the bombs already gone on out puppet, so they're not really going to be able to kill this legionnaire. So they're getting some damage in. Now, right here, this puppet master is starting to come back in. He's starting to come back in the fight to try to help legionnaire. They, there's no chance they're going to kill this legionnaire. Getting some extra damage in is always nice, but this puppet is going to come into range, and that bomb is almost over. Watch Behemoth. He's going to start chasing. Legionnaire here. He's still going down. He could almost be at Puppet Master by now, by the time he actually turns around. So, had he been there, he might have gotten auto attack off, maybe, but uh, it would have been a lot closer. Either way, he's chasing here. Like I said, he's three seconds on his fissure here. 
So he's going to tower dive with three seconds left on his fissure against a puppet master that has a health pot. Of course that puppet is going to pop health pot. He's low. So by the time that fissure is going to come up, that health pot's already going to have healed him. And we're going to see exactly that happen. By the time his fissure comes up here, it's coming up right now. He throws out the fissure. Puppet survives with 35 health. Now at this point, Behemoth is pretty much dead. Um, he might be able to survive if he goes up into the trees here, pops, it eats a, a tree and pops his health pot, might be able to run back out past the tower, but that's, he might get really, really lucky. Or he might be able to eat through the trees and get out. Um, but, but yeah, he's pretty much dead here. And that was all because of that decision to go in and chase that puppet master and get that fissure out. If that puppet master didn't have that health pot, oh yeah, that was bloodlust, no problem for Behemoth. But the fact that he had that health pot, Behemoth had already committed, he was already past the tower. He had committed. And he still tried to go and throw that fissure. And by the time he threw that fissure, he was there was, there was no way he was getting out of there alive. So... Um, he technically could have backed when he got around here. Um, they had no way of really stopping him. But the fact that he committed that deep and through the fissure, Legionnaire just came in for the easy taunt. Um, so anyways, I, I'd really like to stress the importance of knowing your enemy's um, items. Now, I'm not sure if you noticed this, but uh, during that, there was an interesting event happened mid. And I, I, I want to just play through this once again. Uh, this is a uh, madman and polywog. We're gonna see here two uh, two Smurfs. Pebbles almost kills Madman there with a combo, but he doesn't get the toss on Madman. Madman does have a haste bottled, and just just watch and see what happens here. This is quite comical. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> Madman's gonna die. Po uh, Pebbles is also gonna get the kill on Polly, and then Polly's gonna die, or er, uh, and Pebbles is also gonna die from the <laughs> from the Polly. Pebbles is a little frustrated there, but uh, <laughs> let's let's look back at this. So we're gonna see exactly what happens here. First of all, this madman's playing really aggressive. I don't really understand that. Um, whenever you're laning against Pebbles, um, once again, obviously important to keep an eye on your on his items. But uh, the main thing to keep an eye on on Pebbles is his mana. Knowing that 240, it's a 120 and 120 is mana cost for for uh, each of his abilities, so 240 is his combo cost. So you have to keep in mind of that. And uh, Madman's playing really aggressive here, and he's going to get comboed. It's just a matter of time when he plays that aggressive. Um, and it's a surprise. It's pretty surprising that he doesn't just die right here. Uh, Pebbles is just a little slow on the, on the toss there, I think. And I was actually really surprised that it picked up that amp. But anyways, um, I'm going to see exactly what happens here. Uh, I'm just going to see some attacks go off. And I, I want to, you know, just kind of look at what this madman chooses to do. Okay, he's backing here. He's backing here. He's got haste. He hasn't chose to use haste. He hasn't chose to chug his bottle in between his auto attacks or anything, especially in a fight when you're that low. He's going to get out with one health after that pebble swing. And the only reason... He didn't die there is because he got minus 20 damage because he has an iron buckler. 60% chance. <laughs> so he doesn't die there. Now, he backs. He still hasn't used haste. He still hasn't popped that bottle to use haste, which he doesn't really need, but he needs the bottle charge. He still hasn't used that. He would have had 135 health right now. At the very least. Instead... He dies from an auto attack from Pebbles, once again getting another proc on that shield. So he dies to that. Polywog screws up and attacks this Warlock after his um, his grip goes out. Um, his shackle, sorry. Um, if you're trying to link things together, you can use the shift key. So um, you can also use it for an auto attack. So if you're tongue-tying, if you tongue-tie, hold shift and right-click the hero. Immediately after your tongue tie, you will auto attack the hero. So, had Polywog done that, he would have killed Pebbles right here. He would have been able to auto attack him and then jolt him. But, 
He doesn't do that. He attacks the Warlock once, then he runs up into the Pebbles. Uh, they trade hit for hit. Pebbles, this time, gets minus 20 damage uh, from his shield, but it leaves him at 24, so it really wouldn't have made a difference. Polly throws out the Jolt, but uh, the Warlock, I believe, is the actual one who uh, delivers the killing blow. So anyways, hope I, uh, in this video, hope I kind of stress the importance of watching... Um, the inventor inventory of your of both your allies and your enemy so knowing exactly what their options are um, tower diving against someone with a health potion probably wasn't the best idea when your abilities are on cooldown and then mid um, using your bottle you know he could have in between pebbles auto attacks he could have been chugging little sips of his bottle would have given him not a full tick but it would have given him probably you know 50 health which would have l ended in him surviving and definitely would have been a kill on Pebbles and both him and his polywog friend would have survived. So sipping your bottle, you can do it in between auto attacks when it's in a really, really close fight like that. That's important. And just, I, I really don't understand why he was saving his bottle uh, when it was going to be that close. Um, and then the other thing, polywog, um, I talked a little bit about shift command there. Um, you can use tongue tie from polywog, shift, right click the enemy hero, and uh, immediately after your tongue tie ends, you will throw an auto attack at that hero instead of um, accidentally um, attacking the warlock because tongue tie ends, your hero attacks the closest target, which is the warlock. And uh, that's why um, he ended up dying there. So hopefully you learned a lot from this video. Nizcast, Bloodlust, Episode 3.